On March 18, 2016, a routine landing changed to an emergency in a matter of seconds. An E-2C Hawkeye landed on aircraft carrier USS Eisenhower. But once the tail hook of the aircraft caught the arresting wire, as the Hawkeye got close to the end of the runway, it didn't seem like they were going to stop. And then, the wire snapped, sending the aircraft off the edge of the flight deck and down toward the water. But why did the wire snap? To answer that, we need to look at how a typical aircraft arresting system actually works, which has three primary components the arresting cable, the purchase cables, and the arresting engine. If you're blaming the arresting cable for this incident, don't, because it's not what you think. The arresting cables or arresting wires, which are also referred to as cross-deck pendants, are flexible steel cables which are spanned across the landing area. The arresting cables are on the front line of the arresting system because these are the cables that the tailhook catches when an incoming aircraft lands. Aircraft carriers have three or four arresting cables numbered one to four from aft to forward. Given their purpose, the arresting cables need to be strong but also flexible. That's why they're made of wire rope with a diameter of one to one and a half inches. Each wire rope is made up of numerous steel strands twisted about an oiled hemp center core, which provides a cushion for each strand and also supplies lubrication to the cable. On American supercarriers, the arresting cables are replaced after every 125 arrested landings, which is much more frequent than I would have guessed. Because of this, the two ends of the cables are equipped with terminal couplings designed for quick detachment. We're talking two to three minutes to swap arresting cables on an aircraft carrier. To make it easier for the tailhook to catch the cable upon landing, the arresting cables on carrier-based systems sit on top of curved steel leaf springs, which raise the cables several inches over the flight deck. These springs can flex so that the aircraft can taxi over the cables. The purchase cable is also a wire rope that looks very similar to the arresting cable, but serves a different purpose. One end of the purchase cable is attached to the arresting cable. The other end of the purchase cable is connected to the arresting gear engine. As the aircraft hooks on to the arresting cable and pulls it, the purchase cables are also pulled out. This is referred to as payout which transfers the landing force of the aircraft to the arresting engine via the purchase cable. Purchase cables are much longer than arresting cables and are also not changed as often as arresting cables are. They're usually checked monthly or every 300 arrestments for the first 1000 arrestments and after that they need to be checked more frequently. Finally, we come to the heart of the beast, the arresting engine. The job of the arresting engine is to absorb the landing force of the aircraft, slow it down and bring it to a stop. The mechanics behind the arresting engines is quite fascinating and yet fairly easy to understand. Below the flight deck, there is a cylinder and a ram. There is a series of sheaves on each end where the purchase cables run around. The idea is that when the incoming aircraft catches and pulls the arresting cable, which in turn pulls the purchase cable, the ram is forced into the cylinder. The cylinder is filled with hydraulic fluid and is connected to a piston-type accumulator through a control valve. On the other end of the accumulator piston, there is compressed gas. When an aircraft catches the arresting cable, it forces the ram into the cylinder, causing the fluid to flow through the control valve and a non-return valve into the accumulator. The non-return valve simply stops the gas pressure in the accumulator from pushing back the fluid and the ram. When the time comes to reset, the reset valve is opened, bypassing the one-way valve, which returns everything back to their starting positions. But a key part of the system is the control valve, because this valve essentially regulates the amount of hydraulic fluid that flows from the cylinder to the accumulator, and this is what helps with absorbing the momentum of the landing aircraft. 
Inside the control valve is a barrel with a series of grooves on it. As the purchase cable is pulled out by the landing aircraft, the barrel is also moved, exposing the more narrow side of the grooves, which increases the resistance to the flow of the fluid. This means that the payout of the purchase cable will slow down and will ultimately stop, which in turn brings the aircraft to a full stop. And this is how the arresting engine and the overall arresting system works. Although more modern arresting systems may work slightly differently, the overall process is similar to what we described. Now, if for any reason the purchase cable stops paying out while the aircraft still has too much momentum, that's when the cable can snap, which is exactly what happened to the Hawkeye in our story. A miscalibrated engine could not properly absorb the energy, so the arresting cable was placed under much more load than it's certified for. And ultimately, the cable gave in. Now wait a second. Different aircraft have different weights. So how does the arresting engine account for different aircraft with varying weights? Let's go back to the control valve. The grooves on the barrel are not all the same. They have different widths, so the starting position of the barrel needs to be carefully selected based on the weight of the aircraft. This is why an officer in primary flight control needs to provide the weight of the landing aircraft to the arrestor operator, so the arresting system can be adjusted accordingly. We should also mention that the Hawkeye didn't crash into the water. In fact, the pilot and co-pilot received the Armed Forces Air Medal for saving the aircraft. But on the flight deck, it was a different story. The snapped wire swung across the flight deck, hitting eight sailors, causing injuries from minor lacerations to broken bones and a cracked skull. But luckily, no fatalities. And it's because of incidents like this that the flight deck crew are trained to not turn their back on a landing aircraft, especially when a split second can determine the difference between surviving and not. It's also worth noting that arresting systems are not exclusive to aircraft carriers. They also exist on the ground. There are some differences, however, between the land-based and carrier-based arresting systems. For example, land-based arresting systems use donut-shaped rubber supports in order to raise the cable off the ground. And instead of a purchase cable, land-based systems have a purchase tape made up of heavy nylon. But the tape serves a similar purpose. Land-based systems usually consist of two arresting engines located on either side of the runway. The arresting engines apply braking force to reels holding the purchase tapes, which in turn slow the aircraft and bring it to a stop. These land-based arresting systems are typically installed in Air Force bases to accommodate emergency landings due to brake failures, landing gear malfunctions, and so on. As part of the maintenance of these systems, sections of the purchase tape that have been exposed to the elements are cut off and then the tape clamp is reattached to the new end of the tape. But because these land-based arresting systems are only used in case of an emergency, which may not happen for years, they need to be certified once a year. The certification includes the system catching an aircraft moving at 128 knots, resulting in a 1,000-foot rollout to a full stop. But if these arresting systems all fail, there is still a safety net. Literally. <laughs>